Okay, thanks for coming everyone. Uh, today we have Rutger Campbell, uh, who's at uh, the uh, IBS um, uh, in the discrete math group, uh, and he's going to be talking about counting well quasi-ordered downsets. Uh, go ahead, Rutger. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, so this actually uh, comes from a problem Dylan asked last year from uh, in last year's open problem session. So this is sort of the perfect time uh, to take this up and. This is all sort of joint work with Dylan. Um, and yeah, I mean, so it's sort of talk about this. Uh, so when I'm saying counting, we care about sort of the cardinality of things and um, whether it's countable or not. Uh, so uh, the reason we'd care about whether or not some something's countable is because uh, all formulae and algorithms are finite length. So we can only um, do uh, constructible, computable, recognizable things with uh, countably many of whatever object. Uh, so the uh, rationals, for instance, um, you can construct all of them, but there are some reals that aren't because they're just too many reals. Um, so this is sort of why countability is something worth looking at. Um, so sort of context thinking in is if we have a collection of objects, uh, we're considering classes of, of objects. So for a set, um, if you want to describe, if you want to look at sort of subsets, uh, there's, if the set is finite, then there's countably many subsets. So uh, that's sort of, uh, if you want to construct all, you can do it if it's finite. And and Cantor with diagonalization had this sort of as a, if and only if. So if you have an infinite set, there are just too many um, subsets in general to be able to sort of do stuff with all of them. Um, and however, uh, even if we have an infinite set, um, we still sort of have two, two categories. Um, the set itself can be countable or the set, it, it can be uncountable. And what's sort of relevant here um, is that if the set's countable, we, can, we still have countably many finite subsets. But if the set's uncountable, we even the finite subsets are uncountable. Um, and these are for just general classes where we have no uh, gen general sets where we have no notion of sort of relations between the objects and the sets. Uh, this being the graph and matroid seminar, um, we have some notion of substructure. Uh, so instead of sets, we will be looking at combinatorial post sets. Um, and I'll define sort of all the terms in red later, um, but it's a generalization of um, previous observations where instead we're looking at uh, additional, not just a set, but we have possibly additional structure um, so we can do more. Um, right, so commentary post set. Ah, right. Uh, this has been a very exciting project. It's sort of been, we've had a lot of good ideas. Um, this last one had been giving us some trouble. It's been a work in progress for a while. Um, although we've had the strategy, you know, for a couple months, although just a couple hours ago, Dylan emailed me again and uh, with our new, um, alterations to the strategy, it does seem to, to, to go through completely again. So yeah, um, it should be good. So uh, yeah, the types of post we're looking at or, uh, are, are very much sort of arise when we're looking at combinatorial objects or so call them uh, combinatorial post sets. Um, and the criteria we have is the set has to be uh, 
countable. We can't have any uh, infinite descending chains, and we can't have any element that lies above uh, an infinite ascending chain. Um, so the rationals don't work. Um, the ordinal omega plus one just doesn't work because you have uh, omega lying above sort of an infinite ascending chain. But if we're looking at um, graphs with the substructure, uh, sorry, the, the subgraph relation, this is an instance because the size of a graph gives you uh, a grading that, that lets you uh, have all of these things. And well, uh, two and three anyway. And just the fact that the counter many graphs gives you the first. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm using countable here sort of for convenience, um, but I think everything else works with appropriate alterations otherwise. Um, and instead of subsets, we're looking at downwards closed sets. Um, so whenever we have uh, something in downwards closed set, anything below it is also going to be in the set. Um, and if uh, our post set has no infinite descending chain, this means our down sets are determined by uh, minimal non elements. So you can actually have these minimal non elements and it's sort of uniquely given by uh, the, the minimal obstructions. Okay. Um, and because these are sort of minimal, they form an anti chain. And, and this is sort of what will give us the first uh, observation. And just sort of reminder, um, if you have uh, no infinite descending chains and no infinite anti-chains, you uh, can call it well quasi ordered. Uh, for brevity, we'll use WQO um, in the uh, written. And um, if you have a common for your post set, there are countably many downsets if and only if uh, this post set is well quasi ordered. So this is precisely because the minimal obstructions are anti chains. So if you don't have any infinite anti chains to uh, give any downwards closed uh, set, you only need finitely many uh, elements of P. Um, and if P isn't well quasi ordered, this means you have an infinite uh, anti chain. And then you can take any subset you want of this infinite anti chain uh, as obstructions to some down set. Um, and as sort of Cantor showed with the diagonalization argument, this. Uh, there are infinitely many subsets of an infinite, or sorry, there are uncountably many subsets of an infinite set. So uh, this is, uh, this, this would be uncountable. So this is an if and only if. Um, yeah, so, so well quasi ordered is taking sort of the role of uh, finite sets. Um, and sort of one of the most well-known and celebrated uh, results in uh, structural graph theory. Uh, Robert theme Seymour. So if we're considering the post set of uh, graphs and we're looking at the minor relation, then we have that this, uh, this post set is well quasi ordered. So there are finite, or there are countably many uh, minor closed classes of graphs. Um, well quasi ordered is a very sort of strong condition and for many uh, substructure relations we'll look at, um, this will just not be the case at all. So uh, for instance, if we look at subgraphs instead of uh, 
minors. The cycles form an antichain, an infinite antichain. So uh, graphs and their uh, subgraphs are not well quasi ordered. Um, and you also have what we've been sort of calling split paths. So a path with a vertex of degree three at either end. Um, and sort of this remarkable result of ding gives that these are essentially the only uh, or the fundamental anti-chains that can occur. And what I mean by that is if you have a uh, class of graphs that's closed under subgraphs, if it isn't all quasi ordered, then it must be because it contains some subset, some infinite subset of uh, one of these antichains. So this is this is sort of a beautiful theorem and has sort of a, has a nice proof. And it sort of relies on the fact that um, if you don't contain a long path as a subgraph, then you're all quasi ordered by the subgraph relation. Um, and this is this is essentially showing you have bounded uh, tree depth, and uh, you can sort of decorate something with bounded tree depth by paths. And then uh, this is a type of structure that occurs if you don't contain long cycles or long split paths. So this is a very nice proof, um, but for the moment, we're not actually gonna care about the proof of it at all. What we're gonna care about is sort of the form of this theorem. So the fact that well quasi ordering in this post set is given by looking at a specific set of graphs, a specific set of elements. And this collection of elements um, is sort of all we need to look at to tell whether um, the uh, a given down set is well quasi ordered. So in a sense, um, this set contains essentially all um, up to sort of decorations possibly, essentially all the uh, antichains that can occur. Um, yeah, so there are certainly other antichains. So um, I could have, in, in the case of subgraphs, I could have um, cycles with a dangling path, but be, but that's still sort of just, if you, if you close under subgraphs, you can still get sort of cycles. Um, so we'll call um, such a collection of elements in the post set a uh, W or, or well quasi ordered litmus or well quasi ordered litmus set. Um, and yeah, this is this is a way to certify that um, something won't be well quasi ordered. Uh, the uh, this WQO litmus set doesn't actually have to be an antichain itself. Um, but it will sort of be made up of antichains. Uh, so an easy example of one uh, where you don't have one is if you have um, a countable set of, or sorry, yeah, an omega set, om, uh, aleph not many aleph not stars, um, I guess upward stars. So you need to contain all the roots and you need to contain all the leaves uh, on each of these. So this is an instance where uh, the litmus set might not be uh, an antichain itself. Um, so seeing this for subgraphs or for graphs under the subgraph relation, uh, one might ask whether um, this is also true for, for digraphs. So can we find a collection of digraphs that uh, will sort of 
tell us when a given downset is well calculated or not. And we're going to find that no, um, there is no such set. And it's going to come down to the countability of uh, the collection of well quasi-order downsets. And uh, sort of the, the first thing to note is that if we have um, a well quasi-order litmus set, then uh, this tells us that there are uh, countably many well quasi-order downsets. Um, so this is rather sort of nice, um, uh, nice sort of certification. So uh, we'll consider sort of this post set and we'll look at um, this litmus set L. So for a given um, well quasi or down set, um, we can find a cofinite um, subset of the litmus set and a finite uh, subset elsewhere that sort of uh, define or uniquely define our uh, downset. Um, by the sort of ceiling brackets here, I mean the upwards closure. So I'm saying every um, or each well quasi to down set is going to be of the form um, the post set with uh, the upwards closure of A union B removed for some cofinite subset of our Littner set and some finite uh, set elsewhere in, in the post set. Um, so Specifically, we'll take A to be the elements of the litmus set that are not um, in our downset. And because uh, our downset is well closely ordered, there's co finitely many of these. Um, and now, if I look at the um, downset with A as its uh, obstructions. I have this set in green. So because L is a litmus set and because this green set uh, does not meet A, this green set is well quasi-ordered by the property of um, L being a litmus set. So we now have green, the green set being well quasi-ordered. Um, and the fact that green is well quasi-ordered means we don't have any infinite edit chains and we have countably many sort of downwards closed uh, subsets. So D being a subset of this green set gives us that um, we can have finitely many obstructions within the screen set. So this downwards closed set D is given by the uh, cofinitely many litmus elements uh, it doesn't contain and sort of within um, the downwards closed set with, with these litmus elements as the obstruction, we only need finitely many more elements uh, to actually get all of the obstructions to our downset. So we're only choosing, uh, we're choosing co-finitely many and then finitely many. So this is uh, countable. Uh, yeah, the, the, num the number of ways to do this is countable. Uh, yeah, so so the fact that um, yeah, the, the fact that uh, well having a well quasi ordered litmus set um, requires 
only countably many well quasi ordered um, downsets is something we can use to show that there is not a litmus set. Um, so before doing uh, digraphs, um, just much simpler to start with uh, binary strings under the substring ordering. And uh, we can see, we will see that uh, there are uncomfortably many well quasi the down sets in this post set. And sort of by the previous remark, this will mean that there is no uh, litmus set for what was you're doing in this post set. Right, so um, the way we go through this is for some real number between zero and one, uh, we'll represent it as a sort of um, binary, uh, yeah, we'll represent it in, in the base two starting with a zero, and uh, then we'll take some sort of infinite string using sort of the uh, binary uh, piadic valuation. But this is, this is a case where just seeing the, the picture will be much more illustrative. So if I have um, R as 0 0.A, B, C, D, then sort of this infinite string is uh, where A occurs in every second position, B occurs in every fourth, C will be in every eighth, D will be in every sixteenth, and so, so forth. Um, I've been a bit, yeah, right. And, and then we'll let, uh, S R B uh, sort of downwards closure or the, the finite, uh, yeah, the, the, I shouldn't say downwards closure because this, this string is infinite, um, but it's going to be the collection of all finite substrings of this. Um, and this is going to be, we're going to see that this is going to be what was ordered and we're going to see that, well, for, for different values of R, these collections are going to be different. Um, so I've been a bit dishonest here in that up to sort of the last line, um, this isn't well-defined. Um, so looking at two examples or well, one example, um, if I look at three quarters, I have two different binary uh, representations um, and they give two different infinite strings. Uh, so in the first one, A is one, B is one, and everything else is zero. So we get sort of uh, this infinite string. And in the second, uh, we're leaving out the second one, and we have infinite string of ones instead. Um, but while these string infinite strings are different, they have exactly the same finite substrings. So in either case, uh, this S three quarters is going to be the, the finite binary strings where uh, in every four sort of consecutive digits of S, we're going to have a zero. Um, and with sort of this collection will be uh, well-defined. Okay, so uh, first, Let's see that this set is well quasi ordered. Um, and the way to see this is that if we have um, some elements of this set, um, and this binary string is, is long, then it's going to have to contain um, some number of the first characters of, of the infinite string. So for instance, if I take any, um, any string of length uh, 14, 
in this set is going to have to contain the first seven. Uh, can I? Uh, never mind. I was going to see if I could use the lady pointer. Um, yeah. So, any any uh, yeah any any uh, string of of length fourteen is going to have to contain the first seven uh, characters of of um, sigma r. And yeah, this is just. Sort of an easy argument if you start looking at how the strings are presented um you're just too long to avoid any of the repetitions of the first seven digits um, and this just will give us well quasi ordering uh, under the substring relation because if we have um suppose for contradiction we have an infinite antichain look at um an element in this antichain that so occurs as quickly as possible in this infinite string. So let's say we had uh, C or whatever binary string is given by C, A, B, A. Um, then anything that has 14 um, characters or more is going to have to contain the first seven characters of this infinite string and will therefore have C, A, B, A uh kappa as a um substring so we'll have a bound on the size of the strings in this antichain but that means this antichain can't actually be infinite um so this just sort of immediately gives well quasi ordering um on the other hand Oh, well, not 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 on the other hand, but sort of to complement uh, the argument we're going for. Um, if we look at sort of the one density of um, a string in the set, and by one density, I just mean the number of ones divided by the the length of the string. Um, as they take longer and longer strings uh, in the set. Um, I'm going to get closer and closer uh, to having a one density that's R. And this is just because every second uh, character is going to be an A, and every fourth is going to be a B, every eighth is going to be a C. So just counting the number of ones is going to be given by... Um, something that looks very close to the binary representation of R. Um, and with this being the case, if we have two different um, R and R prime, for long enough strings in uh, the corresponding sets, the one density will have to just be different. So uh, yeah, for, for long enough strings, uh, with with different R and R prime, they're just yeah, um, you yeah. So looking at long enough strings, you can just show that these full sets will have to be distinct. So this gives us that uh, there are going to be uncountably many. So uh, yeah, we have uncountably many well quasi ordered um, down sets in the post set of. Uh, binary strings and a substring relation. So this is um, a very dependent argument. Uh, this, this argument very much depends on um, substrings and the structure. Um, another way we can sort of combinatorially just show that there are uncountably many um, is by what we're going to call a binary string of well quasi ordered down sets. Um, so, can you see what I'm marking? Yes, okay. 
Uh, so by binary tree of what was your down set, uh, what I mean is sort of an induced um, binary, up, upwards binary tree. So anything sort of in this right branch is not going to have um, the first sort of left element um, in, in, uh, as a substring. And by sort of having uh, the, the work was your down set, I mean every chain, uh, oops, every chain, if I take this collection and consider it a downwards closure, um, this, this chain defines a well quasi to down set. So this binary tree uh, displays uncountably many, and in fact, sort of continue, continuumly many um, well quasi to down sets, because each of these chains gives a well quasi to down set, and they're just uh, continuumly many. Um, Right. So back to um, looking at digraphs, taking binary strings, um, we can map strings in S to sort of a subset of digraphs, just sort of by looking at the path and uh, using the binary string to, to direct it. Um, and this isn't sort of enough because we do need um, to be considering a downwards closed uh, sets of digraphs. But if we look at sort of um, extending this, we can get sort of an order preserving surjection from a walk was your down set not of binary strings, but of, of sets of binary strings. Um, so if we consider this set of digraphs and we close in their sub subgraphs, um, then we can still show that sort of this class of, um, this subgraph closed class of digraphs is, is well quasi ordered by uh, having surjection, order preserving surjection. So um, you can, one can just uh, see that that works. Essentially, just because any any antechain will have to come from an antechain, or any yeah any exactly so any infinite antechain would have to come from an infinite antechain, um, yeah and and this is sort of uh, a key thing. Um, so this is what will give us that there are just uncountably many. Uh, subgraph closed uh, collections of digraphs. Um, in contrast, if we don't have this order preserving um, surjection, so um, we can think of adding sort of um, additional uh, minor operation or, or substructure operation. Um, to, to destroy this, this type of uh, um, mapping. So butterfly miners, where we're not only considering uh, deletion of, of uh, arcs, but we're also allowed to contract um, when either it's sort of the uniquely outgoing or uniquely incoming uh, edge. Um, and in the case of sort of uh, the picture we had here, this would sort of allow us to contract one of these. Um, so I was I was going to sort of propose uh, oops, propose looking at um, digraphs under butterfly miners um, as sort of an interesting problem to look at. But it turns out that this has been thought about already. And um, this does, in fact, work if we, um, in sort of destroying um, these 
and comes with many, many downsides. Um, so we have um, a well quasi or a litmus set for well quasi ordering, and it essentially corresponds to the orientations of um, as long as sort of we have alternating uh, paths, the orientations of uh, the litmus set for the non simple uh, case of subgraphs. Although then we sort of have these additional, um, yeah, possible decorations. So this litmus set corresponds of alternating uh, directed cycles and alternating paths where we have these. Um, different possible ends of the end. Excuse me. Um, and yeah, so so this is this is sort of rather nice that we thought we had thought about uh, what a nice um, new ordering would be and it turns out this is solved. Um, and the trick we pulled for uh, digraphs works much more generally. So if we look at graphs and induced subgraphs, we can also sort of take uh, a map from the binary strings and then sort of doing uh, looking looking at their disclosure. If we look at graphs and induced minors, if we look at hypergraphs and subhypergraphs, um, or just matroids under minors. Um, so we have all of these sort of maps that from, from binary strings. Um, and then if we're looking at downward disclosure, we have to add more information to, uh, for the other sort of matroids, hypergraphs, or graphs in the downward disclosure. Um, but we can do this by sort of adding more information and preserving whole cause order. Um, right, so this is sort of a big summary, but either finding in well quasi order litmus sets or having um, this type of, uh, uh, yeah, using sort of binary strings, we can check for a whole slew of uh, combinatorial post sets. Um, yeah, so, so these, when, um, yeah, these are some rather remarkable results on their own. Um, the the topological minors one is actually very recent. It's been uh, announced and um, yeah, so these are all sort of interesting just and worth looking into in their own right and, and the, just the litmus set. And yeah, these, of course, each of these can be difficult on its own, um, but once, sort of have either litmus set and you know it's a litmus set or um, the uh, binary tree of what was your orderings or what was your down sets, we can sort of find these two. And, and with these, uh, having found these, this does sort of lend itself to what to, to interesting problems in uh, for other minor operations. So if we look at, a, um, so subhypergraphs were hypergraphs where we were allowed to delete vertices and delete edges. Um, and we had this uh, encoding um, and we can think, well, if we're again sort of allowed to, if, if we add, add um, operations to a substructure relation, um, what might destroy it? And if we also allow removing elements from a given edge, like this is something that uh, destroyed embedding, and this turns out to sort of be uh, follow from uh, graphs and subgraphs. Um, and uh, matroids under minors, we uh, this sort of relied on having. Um, Long paths are being closed under principal extensions, um, and yeah. So, so this also sort of turned out to um, uh, sort of lend itself to to a way to think of interesting uh, possible questions. 
So two, two problems I think are sort of interesting in this way uh, is what if we're looking at cardinality of well causated downsets in the post set of um, induced subgraphs where we're not allowed a long path or its complement. So I guess looking at a path of length five or with five vertices or the complement of the path five vertices. Uh, and for matroids, we relied on having sort of um, long lines. So what if you have no long line miners or uh, it's dual? So uh, the reason the complement or the, uh, the dual here are sort of required is because we don't want to just be able to pull the stricken dual. Um, so these are possible questions one could ask. Um, and up to this point, it's not clear whether sort of the techniques we used um, would be sufficient. But as I sort of mentioned uh, early on in this talk, it turns out that um, looking for a litmus set or looking for a, um, a binary tree of what causes your down sets are the two things one would need to do. Um, well, I mean, again, those are possibly very difficult on their own, um, but those function as certificates of the cardinality of the collection of what causes your down sets. Um, so yeah, the, the, the results mentioned at the beginning don't necessarily have the application on their own, but they do tell us that this is all we will ever actually have to do. Um, right. So if we have uh, countably many more causative downsets, this happens precisely when we have uh, a more causative litmus set. Uh, we already saw that uh, having a walkway zero litmus set implies that there are countably many walkway zero downsets. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to sort of sketch the proof of the, the other direction. And yeah, this is this is going to be sort of um, constructive, but not in a way that's particularly useful. Um, we won't know that this set is constructible for instance. So sort of a key lemma. Um, if we have uh, a downset that is not well quasi ordered, um, then we can find um, an anti-chain uh, that is an infinite anti-chain that's the obstructions of a well quasi ordered set that sort of infinitely intersects this downset. Um, so for any downset um, to show that a given down this for a downset that's not well quasi ordered to, to show it uh, isn't well quasi ordered, you don't need a general uh, ant infinite antichain, but one can actually find sort of a very nice one. Um, one that's sort of low in this um, post set and I'll be sort of more concrete. Um, let's A sub D be the set of all infinite antichains within uh, this non well quasi ordered down set. Um, we'll say an antichain, an infinite antichain is smaller than another one when the downset that it defines as sort of uh, given by its obstructions is smaller uh, or is, is a subset of the other. Um, alternatively, yeah, so the upwards closure of A1 engulfs is, is a superset of the upwards closure of A2. Um, which means the, the downset with obstructions A1 is a subset of uh, the downset with obstructions A2. Um, and one can have um, infinite downchains of 
uh, in this post set of antechains. Um, but Zorn's lemma will actually just tell us that um, we can find minimum, um, or sorry, minimal uh, infinite antechains. Um, so taking a, a minimal infinite antechain, um, the fact it's minimal means that there cannot be an infinite antechain sort of in the downset defined um, by, by A0. Um, so this, this downset is well quasi-ordered. And um, this was only sort of occurring within uh, D, but we can extend this infinite antechain to um, an infinite antechain, not just in D, but in P itself. Um, and yeah, so, so doing this, A will um, be the obstructions to um, a walk, the, the same walk was you to downset that was given by A naught within D. So yeah, th this set A has uh, infinite intersection with D and um, it's the obstructions to a uh, well quasi downset. And yeah, uh, now we'll use this lemma. So considering a combinatorial uh, post set, we'll, we want to construct now sort of our litmus set. So what countability is going to do for us is we can just enumerate. So we'll enumerate the, the well quasi to down sets. And we'll also now be able to enumerate these infinite antechains. Um, because there are countably many well quasi to down sets, and each of these um, required antechains as the obstruction um, to well quasi to down set, there are countably many. So we now have a uh, enumeration of, of down sets and enumeration of the infinite antechains that we will need. Um, sort of important remark, because these down sets are well quasi ordered, they can only finitely many, or they can only finitely intersect any of these uh, antigens. Um, so now all we sort of have to do is uh, alter a given um, antigen in our sequence by removing all the elements that occur in uh, one of the downsets preceding it. And then we'll take the union of all these. So um, we can think of sort of interleaving these two enumerations and going through um, by uh, taking an antechain when it's an antechain, and then when we have a downset, we remove the elements of this downset from all antechains after it, um, and just taking sort of uh, the limit of this, we'll get uh, a union of these, these antechains. So because uh, of this remark, um, we've only removed finitely many elements from any of these infinite uh, antechains, uh, or from each of these infinite antechains. So if we have a set that's not well quasi ordered by the, the lemma, um, it's going to have infinite intersection with um, some AI in this sort of enumeration. And we've only removed finitely many things, so it will still have infinite, inter infinite intersection with this AI. Um, so any uh, non well quasi ordered downset will have infinite intersection with this set L. 
And on the other hand, um, if we have a downset that is well quasi-ordered, uh, then its elements can only occur in finitely many um, of these sort of altered antichains because we've removed these elements from um, all antichains that sort of occur after it in this uh, in this ordering. So, uh, yeah, and, and this, this set out uh, certainly isn't uh, constructive and won't necessarily be an antichain in its own, but um, it contains all the essential uh, antichains, which were these AI, and it doesn't contain uh, too many of any uh, well quasi downset, or too much of any well quasi downset. Okay, yeah, so. Um, that's very sort of nice proof that took us uh, some thinking to, to get to, and it's not too technical. Um, on the other hand, uh, if we have uncountably many more quality to downsets, um, finding this binary tree uh, is turned out to be fairly technical and we've had a strategy for a while, but just we've had a strategy, we've been fairly confident for a while, but just keep needing to alter it. Um, so I'm not going to sort of, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions, but um, not gonna give sort of a, a complete sketch, but the, the basic idea is, um, or the old basic idea um, is that, you can find sort of uh, two elements where if you look at the upwards closure um, of one and excluding the other, then uh, you have uncountably many more cause you to downsets. And this is sort of the, the induction step at, at any level. Um, and to prove this, you do, one can do it by contradiction. So if one never has this, then one can sort of go up by levels and one can count the number of um, what cause you to downset sort of by looking at the intersection at any level. Um, so this will have to occur somewhere. And this lemma as written um, will give us a binary tree, but it won't give us a binary tree that has each of the chains being well quasi ordered. Um, so to improve upon that, beyond just having these elements, we sort of need to uh, look at the footprint of well quasi ordered downsets and and consider sets at any level. Um, so when we're constructing this this binary tree, we'll also have sort of um, a binary tree of, of tubes that within this sort of tube, any uh, subset is, uh, downwards closed subset is well quasi ordered. So these are sort of well quasi ordered tubes. And the fact that these chains occur within these tubes means that their downwards closures will be well quasi ordered. Um, but if, yeah. Um, Uh, had talked to Pascal Golin here uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it turns out that the strategy we sort of come up with here um, is the basic outline is actually very similar to showing that if you have an infinite graph uh, with uh, uncountably many ends, one can find sort of a binary tree. Have to be a bit stronger here because we're uh, looking at a directed graph or a post set um, and we want this these chains to be uh, to give all closure to them sense uh, yeah so I'm, I'm happy to to talk more about this later if anyone like um, but now uh, I'm sort of 
that was the, the concrete stuff. And now I'm going to sort of pose what I sort of like as, as, as an open question. Um, so we've done all of this um, to sort of be able to find, to, to show uh, whether you have countably many or uncountably many um, or cause you to downset. But how do we actually sort of, how could one look for these? Um, so what comes up in all of the proofs of sort of finding these litmus sets and uh, the proof I, I used for these are um, binding strings that I, that I showed. Um, it always relied on sort of having path structure or, or strings. Um, and this is sort of sort of a somewhat natural reason for this, as I mentioned in, in uh, the proofs of Ding's theorem. Um, if we're considering the post set of, of graphs under induced subgraphs, um, Higman showed that if you don't contain a long path or as a uh, subgraph, so non-induced, then um, we're well quasi-ordered by induced uh, subgraph. So this is bounded tree depth. And this fact means that if we look at sort of any extension of induced subgraph. So we can add operations besides just deleting edges if we're allowed to, I'm oh, sorry, deleting vertices, if we're also allowed to delete edges or if we're allowed to, you know, contract an edge that's adjacent to a vertex of degree two or what have you. Um, any extension, if we're looking at the downsets, um, in an extension of this, of this what was your, or of this uh, um, relation of this ordering, then we still have just uh, the, the same type of thing. If we don't contain a path, um, then these sub, uh, then these collection of graphs are sort of well quasi ordered in this extension of induced subgraph. Um, so to not be well quasi-ordered, you need long paths. Um, and sort of, so, I want to say as a converse, but also in a way I might mention if I, um, also sort of a converse of, of a cross goals tree theorem. Um, if we look at, the subset of graphs that have um, bounded tree width. And we look at the subset of graphs that have bounded path width. Um, and focus on well quasi ordering sort of within these classes for a given set of graphs. Um, are these related? Is well quasi ordering within bounded tree width related to bounded um, path width for you know possibly a, a larger bound? So is there a function that gives us well well quasi ordering in bounded um, tree width? It's just enough to look at a certain amount of path width. So yeah, the, um, this intersection with with three widths still required because since we've blown up path width we can possibly do other things and for other reasons uh tree width it's up well um something like tree width will be required so uh another well a corollary but also uh, equivalent way to to think of this is well um are the anti-chain do the anti-chains have bounded path width always so are we, is it sufficient just to look for anti-chains that have bounded uh, path width? Um, and actual application here of uh, our theorems, maybe it's just um, uh, 
this would also give us it's to to look for litmus sets one could look for um again only bound path width or for the binary trees looking bound path width um by tree width and path width um it would actually be rank click nco or in the case i guess of hypergraphs or matroids decomposition width and linear as appropriate um and this is because one can think of um, constructing these classes sort of as automatas or um, and thinking of, of labelings. Um, um, hey, Rekker, sorry to interrupt. No. Um, just a, a, oh, wow, okay, never mind. I, I yeah, I <laughs> noticed. terrible timing on my part. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, you, I'll let you just have a, a minute to, to finish. I, I was just looking at the time. Um, I'm, yeah, an hour and 40 minutes so yeah this was essentially the end so thank you um yeah hope so thank you so much Riker. sorry about that no, <laughs> i should no, have no, just waited no. a couple more seconds um but let's do a round of applause everyone so if you could unmute and then i'll count to three and then we'll clap one okay. two three <laughs> awesome okay thank you so much uh for Anyone uh, who needs to leave uh, at the hour, um, I guess uh, that's the end of the talk. So you can go ahead, uh, remember to email me about um, open problem session uh, problems uh, if you're interested. But um, for any of you that can stay a little bit longer, uh, let's uh, do some questions for Rutger. Um, does anyone have uh, any they'd like to ask? Yeah, I take it you, so this, this combinatorial uh, poser thing, I, I guess that was your definition, is it? Yeah. So yeah. The, the, the one condition was quite strong. So you basically, you were, you were saying that under an element, everything's well quasi ordered. Oh, no, under an element, uh, you don't have an infinite chain. So you can't have a sequence, an infinite sequence. An infinite sequence. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where does that come up? So, so basically, I'm asking: Did this proof? Did this? Did what you chose uh, choose as the definition come out of what you needed in a proof, or did you did you decide on the condition first? Because I mean, usually in usually in combinatorial applications, you only have finitely many things under an element, right? I mean, yeah. But that but this is but you've put in a more generous. No. Um, so some, yeah, uh, the first condition of countability, like, I don't think is actually necessary, but it's just easier yep. to explain. Um, the other two conditions, yeah, I mean, quick answer, well. The second it, condition comes up far more often, right? I mean, that's what I can, Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The last one I've been saying is a condition thrown in anyway, so I don't. Yeah, uh, that that was specifically for uh, binary antichain, so it isn't required for um, the uh, the litmus set. Um, but it is, or something like it, um, essentially because we want levels. To be able to find uh, this this binary tree, um, but yeah, as yeah, and yeah, you you can still do the same proof um, even if you well yeah, uh, fairly confident that you can do the exact same proof even if you have um, an antechain, an infinite antechain, or sorry, well yeah, an infinite antechain or an, below any element but uh yeah we don't want an infinite chain below uh, an element just because we want to be able to have levels yeah so it it made for a more concise description of, of the talk but yeah okay thanks Maybe one more quick question, uh, if anyone has one. All right, 
uh, I'll end the recording there. Thanks again, Rutger, and then we can uh, keep chatting after it's off.